He likes to take many breaks. Uh, okay, so now if I group this, what do I get? What comes out of these two? 4x, four. 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 x. x minus 2, I like that. Plus? 3. three. Now please, dear God, if, you, if these were different, you cannot go further, something went wrong. I love it when those are different and somebody actually does the next step. I'm like, how the hell did you do that? Because the next step requires these two to be the same, right? If this is a plus two, you made a sign mistake somewhere. Don't just start going 4x plus 3, x minus 2, x plus 2. Everybody come on in. That make any damn sense. It does not make any sense. The next step requires you to do this because now since these are the same, what can I do? Take them out. Because they're both x minus 2, I can take an x minus 2 out, and I'm left with 4x plus 3. So that kind of mistake tells me you don't understand why it's working the way it does. That's why that's a bigger mistake. All right, so when I grade, I grade heavier on conceptual mistakes. If you say 4 times 6 is 12, I'm pretty sure you don't believe that. So I'm not going to take a lot off for that. But if you make that kind of mistake, you're going to lose more points because it's a conceptual mistake. Right, it's more, under, and more important to understand what you're doing. Okay. So that's under number two on the handout, what to do with three terms. I call this the surefire method because I'm a Georgia boy. When I was taught this, it was sure, surefire to work. If it's factorable, surefire. Anyway, you got a lot of shit for that, but I didn't name it that. All right. And then finally, it's uh, some of our favorite stuff. Uh, the, the most favorite one is cubes. We'll get there in a second. But the uh, squares one, for some reason, the squares one should be where you go thank God or thank whatever deity you like. Right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's such an easy problem. Um, and the reason I feel okay saying that is because you can look at it the same way you would these. If I had this, what's in the middle? Okay, there's distraction. But what I really mean is, how does it compare to something like you know this? What's in the middle here? Negative 6x, right? What's in the middle? Zero. So I want two numbers that multiply to be this and add to be zero. Because there is zero in the middle, right? So they have to be opposites of each other. So this number has to be a square, a perfect square, right? In order to not have freaky ass answers. I want some whole number answers here, right? So x squared is x and x. 25 is 5 and 5. Plus and minus. Plus and minus. Yes, sir. Did you do the one from yesterday? Um, sure. Which one's that one? It was 9y uh, squared minus 49a6. Good. So now watch. Where the x's come from? I cut x squared in half multiplicatively. Where'd the fives come from? I cut 25 in half, half multiplicatively. You don't say 12 and a half. I'm talking multiplicatively cut it in half, right? So you do the, You identify this. How many terms? Two. So it can only be cubes or squares. There's no GCF here, is there? Nine can't come out of 49, right? So then I just start cutting everything in half. So 9y squared, cut it in half. 3y, three. Three. Three 3y, three minus, plus, or plus minus, I don't care. 7a. Yeah, 7a. Mm, cut it in half. Because what's a cubed times a cubed? There you go. So cut it in half is beautiful because then exponents actually do get cut in half. Because when you multiply two like bases, you add the powers. So when you cut them in half multiplicatively, you actually do cut them in half. It kicks ass. That's why the difference in squares is you go, oh, thank God. Or again, thank whatever. Thank whatever, that's the difference in squares. It's a kick ass easy problem. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Now, what if I would have given you something that looks easy? 
So maybe it isn't. Why can't you do that? The reason this worked is because these are different signs. So the middle can become zero. Zero. Now, if these are different signs, they're going to multiply to be, to be negative. So these have to have two numbers that multiply to be positive. But then they also have to make zero. How the hell are you going to do that? No real number can do that. Notice how I said that. We'll actually be able to factor this later. Right now, we don't know any numbers that make this work because we haven't learned them yet. So right now, you can say not factorable or even better. No, no, no. It's not, a, it's not an equation, so don't say no solution. What do you say about a number that you can't factor? It is no. uh, prime. Prime. Okay, so you can just say prime. That's awesome, awesome. If I said factor 17, you'd go 17. Or maybe 1 in 17. Yeah, I'm done. There's nothing. It's prime. Kick ass. All right, so let's attack the most favorite one. <laughs> Cubes. Right? Ooh, it's yummy. Uh, squares are easy because there's only two of everything. It's relatively easy to handle. Cubes are going to be messier because they inherently mean that there's three of everything. The mistake I see, the problem on this little thing was this, and it is not equal to that. And if you really think about it, it only makes sense that it's not equal to that because if you cube this, you've got to write it three times. Right? You have to write W plus 4, W plus 4. Can you imagine doing all, you have to distribute that and then you have to distribute that into there. Aren't you going to get like a lot of freaking terms? Would anything cancel? Would anything cancel? Hell no, because nothing's negative, for example. Right? Nothing's opposite signs. So it cannot be that. Too bad. Now here's what it is. And see, oh, I really desperately want this to make sense. So this, help me out. W cubed is W times W times W. 64 is? 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 times 4. So we start off as if it's a squares, sort of. Well, I put 1 W plus... 1, 4. If I put 1 W there, how many have to go here? Two. 2. W squared. Now at the end, if I put 1... Man, I have like my 8th period. If I, put one, if I put 1, 4 there, how many have to go here? 16. Right? 2, 4, 16. How are we doing so far? So right there, somebody would tell me, and I don't blame you, uh, somebody would say, why do you do more shit? You, you, Freaky math, dude. We got our W cubed. We got our 64. Leave it alone, Jeff. Poor little thing. But we also got, shit, we also got 4 W squared. Do I want a 4 W squared? No. I also got 16 W. Do I want 16 W? No. So right now I have W cubed plus all this shit. I don't want all that shit, right? So here's the cool thing. So far this is easy. I really want you guys to see it. Uh, I have three of everything. So in the little dude, he's a little dude. So you put one of each. Then you have a big dude. You put two of each in the big dude. The middle term is the cleanup term. He's the cleanup guy. You ever seen Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Get the fox come out there, clean it up. Right? So he's the cleanup guy. He's always going to be, always. Now this should make sense. He's got to be the opposite sign of this because he's got to cancel the shit out that I don't want. Right? That should only make sense. The part that doesn't make as much sense is it's always whatever this is times whatever that is. Now let's check this out. Does it give me what I need? What's W times negative 4W? W. Negative 4W squared. It kills that. Clean it up. Clean it up. And what is 4 times negative 4W? Negative. Negative 16W. Killed that piece. So what am I left with? WQ plus 64. The only parts that I want, right? So if I multiply that back out, I do have all the middle stuff canceled. That dude there cleaned everything up. 
So let me do another problem and just show you the short kind of way to say that to yourself, to set it up. The reason people don't like cubes is because you can't work it. You actually have to memorize stuff that goes in places. That's why people don't like it. But once you realize that, you're like, oh, it's that kind of problem. Okay, uh, so let's try another one. Let's make it a little more interesting here. Let's see. You're like, dude, not too interesting. Uh, So first thing is, how do I identify this? It's got two terms. Could it be squares? Is 8 a square? Is, is 8 a perfect square? No. It's a cube, exactly. So if I break everybody out, 8y cubed would be 2y, 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 2y. Is that cool? And what about 27w6? 3w. I'm cutting it into how many parts? Three. So cut six w's into three parts. So you're each going to have two w's. So 3w squared, 3w squared, 3w squared. Now watch how this just flows. You have three of everything. You put little dude, big dude. The little dude gets one of each. So 2y minus 3w squared. So whatever that sign is, it's going to be the sign in the little dude. Oops, that's the wrong one. Bam. Now, what goes in the big dude? 4. 4y squared at the top. And at the end, it's going to go... You see how you get your 27? Minus 27W6, see? When you multiply these together, don't you get minus 27W6? So you know you're on the right track. And then the middle term is going to be what? Yeah, it's got to be plus. It's a cancellation, dude. 6W squared Y. Just multiply whatever the hell's in there, just multiply it together. Yes, sir. Where are you going to get the 9 again? Oh, because uh, 3, 3. Okay. Yeah. So see, if you break the parts up, if you break them into three parts, you just got to place them in the, where they go. It's not that evil. It's my hope. Yes, sir. I understand what this is. Where? Here? Yep. Because the middle guy is always the product of those two. Yeah. And that's a plus uh, 9 of you. Yeah, thank you. My brain was saying there was something missing. That last term is always positive. So if there's only one negative in the whole thing. It's either there or, in the middle. or it's there. Cool. Even the same opposite always positive? Yes, so. yes. So, yeah. So this is the same sign, opposite yes, sign, always, always positive. positive. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. But I, I, I'm the teacher that won't give you a lot of those. I don't use uh, them because you start to remember soap and forget why it's true, why it makes sense. And then you have no foundation to build anything else on top of it. But that's not that horrible. Soap is nice. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive at the end. Cool. But it, it, why does it make sense? This guy's going to be the opposite sign because he's the cleanup dude. He's got to kill the parts. He's got to be the opposite sign, so it cancels. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, good, good, good. Maybe, maybe. Um, and I've never shown anybody this, but I was, I've, I've been thinking about this. Real quick, you can never factor the big dude, ever. Don't waste any time. Unless there's some GCF you forgot, you can never factor this guy. The middle term is always half what it needs to be to factor. So let me see if you guys can see this. Let me, let me put a, uh, it's the first time I've ever tried this. So I'm gonna, you guys are my guinea pigs here. Real quick. X cubed minus 8. So it should be Good, so you get your 8, good. Alright, now watch. It's kind of cool. Uh, if this was a 4x, 
if this was a 4, now that's done, that's done. I just want to show you something. If that was a 4, you could actually factor this as x plus 2, x plus 2. Let me stop it. You guys see that? So see how overall this would be almost x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2, except the middle term you cut it in half. Hmm? You could, actually. This would be a valid way to do this problem, to be honest. Totally. It would, uh, it would always work. It's kind of funny to me. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't say this is a good way to memorize this, because it's really easy to forget and make mistakes. It's just an interesting side note that a lot of people think the answer here is this. It's not, but it actually is sort of, in a way, close to that. Right? It's just that that's, not, that's going to be half of what it would have been otherwise. Yes, ma'am? We could put either one of the answers? Or no, 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 no. Oh, okay. right. this, is why, this is why I don't need, this is why this, you're my guinea pigs. That is not the answer. Okay. Because this would have twice that in the middle. Okay. But the answer is related to this. I don't know. So maybe I'll never say that again. It's just an interesting little thing to realize. I can't factor this, but if I made that twice as much, it actually comes close to what people think it is. This is completely wrong, right? But it actually sort of is close to right if you adjust it the right way. That's enough. Just remember that one of each, two of each, product in the middle. Right? You can even make that into a song if you like. I won't. I'm not big into that. I was waiting for it. <laughs> You've got to be waiting for a while. Um, okay. So the, one of the first things you use factoring for is to solve equations that there's no other way to solve. So, for example, uh, if I had... Well, actually, let's start with this. Start with that. Let's start with the idea. If I told you that A times B is zero, can you tell me at all what must be true? At least one of the variables yeah. has to be zero. Either A is zero or B is zero. Now, if I told you that A times B is eight, A could be two and B could be four. A could be one and B could be eight. Right? A could be 32 sevenths and B could be seven fourths. That makes eight. So there's an infinite number of freaking things this could be. It's only when there's a zero here that you know something about the factors. One of them must be zero. I'm making a big point of this for some reason. So if I had a problem like this, do you have the product of two numbers? Yes. I have that number times that number is zero. So what must be true? Either x minus 2 is zero. So either x is 2 or x is negative 7. Kick at you subtract 7. Do you guys see that? The mistake people make is, so you guys might see where I'm going with this. And can you see, of course, the problem probably wouldn't start like that. It would start like this equals zero, and then you factor that, right? Cool, cool. The problem is people get this. Uh, let's see if I can even make it work. Yeah, good. And then they start going, well, either x minus 2 is negative 8, or x plus 7 is negative 8. And that's... Uh, I'm using that voice, I'm kind of giving it away. It's not right, but we know it's not right. If A times B is anything other than zero, I don't know shit. There's an infinite number of things that they each could be. Whatever B is, A is going to be 8 over B. Because then they'll make 8 always. But if it's zero, then I could do something. So this really sucks. This problem really sucks. Because you have to kind of go backwards first. This is a problem like somebody factored too early. Silly person. So what do we have to do to really... I want this to be a factored thing equal to zero. So what do I have to do? I've got, got to multiply. I've got to foil it out. right? So I get x squared plus 
7 minus 2 then 14. And then what do I do? Suck the 8 over, right? So x squared plus 5x equals 2. Minus 6 equals 0. Now I can factor the thing. Now this is the right time to factor. And that is factor. What's the other way to factor 6? 6 and 1, yeah. So it would be x, 6, 1. x, 6 has got to be positive, so you get positive 5. This is one of the evil ones. 2 and 3 makes 5, but they have to be different signs. So they won't make 5. That's when I use them at school. Sure, sure, sure. Magic x, because it's like, it's supposed to be multiplied in equal 6, and then once you So what do you do? You put a negative 6 there and a 5 there? 6 up, and then a plus 5 under, and then... Uh, the multiplication got added to the top one, and then yeah. add and subtract. But see, so it's fine. But personally, I don't know how making the x makes it any different than me just knowing it's got to multiply by negative six and add to be five. But if that helps, if that helps, yeah. I have no, no problem with it. Because I do weird little shit to other people. Like, why do you do that? I'm like, it helps me, so leave me alone. So it's beautiful. People are taught this. If it helps you, awesome. You'll just never see me do it. But if it helps you, good. So now, what are the answers? Kick ass, right? And of course, to make the problem, I just let x be 1. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so 1 plus 7 is 8, I get negative 8. So that's how I knew it was going to work. I just didn't know what the other answer was going to be. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's called the zero, I don't know what this book calls it now, zero property, zero factor property. What the hell is this book called? Every book calls it something different. Oh, cool. This is even more different than I remember. The principle of zero products. Excuse me. <laughs> Screw it. Every book calls it something different. But it basically says if you have the product that equals zero, you can set each product equal to zero separately. Kicks ass. Okay, good. You're good. Okay, so real quick, one last little thing. I just want to look at... Uh, Seven, and then we're going to take a little field trip. Oh, shit, it's already. Damn. Real quick, last little piece. Can somebody, I think I've already talked about this a little bit. Can somebody tell me what X could not be there? Two. Uh, one. Good. Not as zero is the idea, but it can't let the bottom be zero. So if I had this instead, so X cannot be one there. So if I had this, oh, uh, what you got, Jeff? What would you have to do first to figure out what X can't be? Beautiful. Right, and that's, so all of chapter 7 somehow is related to factoring first to see how to go from there. So this would be, good, minus 8. So X can't be 8 or negative 3. Either one of those will make the bottom 0. Big ass. All right, so here's how this is going to work. Uh, we're not going to come back here.